Good morning or afternoon if that's what it is for you. Uh, thank you for joining us today. My name is Ben Miller, joined with by Alicia, uh, and today's topic is going to be converting your labels from the 2003 regulations to 2016 for Canada. A little background before we get into the actual topic. Um, Escher Research was established in 1981 with the first comprehensive nutrition analysis software solution. Today we have the Genesis R&D food and supplements applications, the food processor, consulting services, uh, many other solutions. Today we're going to focus on the Genesis R&D food application, which was orig originally released in 1991, designed to help users manage processes and industry challenges and meet federal regulations for product development, uh, formulation analysis, menu analysis, reporting, regulatory compliance. We do have a few upcoming webinars coming up. Uh, we're going to have a Genesis R&D 11.6 overview. Uh, we don't have dates on these yet. I believe they're on our website um, or we just have tentative dates for the moment. So check our website after this webinar and I think that they'll be set. I just didn't have dates set for this slide and I don't want to guess off the top of my head. Um, so the version 11.6 overview for Genesis will be coming out. That version has not been released yet, so don't panic if you, you don't recognize that version number. Um, and that's why that one doesn't have a date yet, because we want to make sure it's released before we have the overview. Uh, we are going to have a Creating Health Canada dual format nutrition facts tables with Genesis uh, and best practices for creating and managing nutrition labels for multiple countries coming up. And again, check our website to check on those dates uh, and to sign up for those moving forward or to view any of the past webinars. Please note, as always, this webinar is being recorded. It's available on our website in our e-learning center. Um, submit any questions that you have during the webinar. Uh, we will do some Q&A at the very end, um, but if you have a question right away, ask it right away. We'll answer that for you as we can. Um, and if we don't get to your question, or if it's a pretty complex question that requires a complex answer or some research, we'll certainly follow up with you, or you can reach out to us after the fact. Today's agenda, uh, we're gonna be here for about an hour. We're gonna cover an overview of what has happened with Canada's compliance, uh, timelines, new label formats, nutrient changes, ingredient statement changes, the updates inside of Genesis, and our best practices for moving forward. With that, I'm gonna hand it over to Alicia. She's gonna walk through some of those compliance things that we'll kind of move back and forth between some slides with some information, and then move into the software and uh, show you what it looks like in there. Thanks, Ben. So yeah, today we're talking about Canadian nutrient facts tables, labeling regulations, and Genesis features that will help you move from the 2003 to the 2016 label formats. In order to access the Canadian labeling features and create compliant Canadian nutrition facts tables in Genesis, you must have the Canadian labeling module. If you look at for the Canadian labeling features in Genesis and don't see those, or you see grayed out options, this indicates that the Canadian labeling module is not part of your current license. A few of the features we'll be talking about today are in Genesis versions 11.3 .3 or more recent, and today Ben will be showing version 11.5. So if you're not seeing some of these in your software, check your version number with the About button. And as always, if you have any questions about your account or about adding the Canadian labeling module to your software, contact the ESHA sales team. On December 14th, 2016, Health Canada announced Canada's new nutrition facts table formats. The compliance dates for manufacturers to transition to these formats is December 14th, 2021. During this time, we will see both 2003 and 2016 formats on food packaging. And while the initial five-year window to transition may have seemed like plenty of time in 2016, as we all know, that time frame passes quickly. And where are you in the transitional stages? How many of your products need to be updated to the 2016 label? And do you have the required information to support new products that you are introducing to the market? During this transitional period, both the 2003 and 2016 Canadian label formats are available in Genesis. As you work in the 2003 or the 2016 label settings, the appropriate options are available for each format. And we'll talk about considerations and supporting information needed for the 2016 label. 
We'll also reference some previously recorded webinars along the way. So if you need more detail about label settings or a few of the other topics, we do have webinars that explore those in more depth. Between the 2003 and 2016 label formats, note differences of more prominent display of serving size and calories information. Serving size def definitions have changed. The percent DB is no longer listed for carbohydrates. A daily value for sugars has been established and percent DB is reported on the label. Core nutrients have been updated and the order of nutrients has changed so that nutrients contributing to calories like fats, carbs, and protein are listed directly below calories. A new footnote of 5% or less is a little, 15% or more is a lot, helps give reference to the percent DB amounts. Consistency and legibility improvements for ingredients and allergen information has been applied and there is a sugar-based ingredients component where sugar-based ingredients are grouped in the list of ingredients. The new footnote on the label conveniently summarizes the percent DB numbers. Again, it indicates that 5% or less is a little and 15% or more is a lot. This helps consumers understand the amounts of nutrients, whether that be sugar, sodium, fiber, or the minerals that are in foods. Genesis offers the various label formats to comply with Canadian regulations. So whether you need standard label formats in vertical, tabular, or linear style, if you need dual format labels to accommodate as packaged and as prepared foods, or aggregate labels to list different amounts of the same food, or several different types of foods like variety packs or flavors on one label, Genesis can provide the formatting for these. You will see changes to the core nutrients and additional nutrients listed on the 2016 label. We have an excellent chart available in our ebook on Canada's new food labeling regula regulations, and that lists all the DB changes. We'll include a link to this ebook in the webinar follow up email. Potassium was an additional nutrient on the 2003 label, it is a core nutrient on the 2016 label. Vitamin C was a core nutrient, now it's an additional nutrient that can be declared voluntarily. And just again to clarify these terms, for the US core equates to mandatory nutrients and additional means voluntary. Folate experienced a change to the unit in which it is reported from micrograms of folate to micrograms of dietary folate equivalent or DFE. For many of the nutrients, the daily values or the underlying number used to calculate the percent DV has changed. With these changes, often most noticeable on the label is that the percent DV is different than on the 2003 label. So even if you made no changes to your formula or the serving size, you might see a change in the percent DV. And you can see here changes in the amount of daily values for various nutrients. These have experienced an increase in the daily value. Again, that's the number that's used to calculate the percent DV. Notice dietary fiber, calcium and total fat, those are all core nutrients on both the 2003 and the 2016 labels. So with no change to the quantitative values to these nutrients per serving, you might see a lower percent DB on labels. Additional nutrient changes include vitamin A, which has gone from a core nutrient to an additional nutrient. And vitamin A has also experienced a change in the unit in which it is reported. It went from micrograms of retinol equivalents, or RE, to micrograms of retinol activity equivalents, or RAE. Sugar now has a DV, a daily value of 100 grams, and choline is now allowed as an additional nutrient on the label with a daily value of 550 milligrams. These nutrients have experienced a decrease in their daily values. So note sodium, that's a core nutrient on both the 2003 and 2016 labels. So you, you could expect to see the percent DBs for sodium change. Niacin and chromium experience significant changes to their respective DBs. So if you happen to report one of those, your percent DBs could be quite different than on previous labels. With no change to quantitative values per serving, these may show a higher percent DB. Let's take a look at an example using potassium. If potassium is 1,750 milligrams per serving, 
the daily value of potassium for the 2003 label was 3,500 milligrams. So 1,750 milligrams equals 50% dB on the 2003 label. The daily value of potassium for the 2016 label is 4,700 milligrams. So 1,750 milligrams now equals 37% on the 2016 label. There's no change to the quantitative amount per serving, but we see quite different percent dBs. So just considering changes to the daily values, these re regulations affect not just the formatting of all labels, but also the content of nearly every nutrition facts table out there. As I mentioned, vitamin A and folate have experienced a change in the units in which they are reported. So let's take a, look, a closer look at these. Vitamin A was reported in micrograms of REs. Now it's reported in micrograms of retinal activity equivalents, or micrograms RAE. Folate was referred to in terms of micrograms of folate. Now it's referred to in micrograms of dietary folate equivalent, or micrograms DFE. These changes in unit account for conversions from various sources of the nutrients, and they are now more in line with the DRI standards. In Genesis, to populate data in the 2016 label nutrients, we may need to convert units. The following conversions are from the perspective of going from the 2003 label units to the 2016 units. For vitamin A, depending on the source of vitamin A in a food and the information you obtain from suppliers, you may do need to consider calculations when entering nutrient data. Ideally, you'll see information reported in RAE, but if you have vitamin A data for an old label reported in RE, consider the following conversions. Additional factors may be applied, but here are a few examples. If you have um, all animal or all trans-based retinol, that reports directly from RE to RAE. In general, for plant-based sources like vi uh, vitamin A, the conversion is micrograms of RE divided by two equals micrograms RAE. There are some plant-based, um, excuse me, some plant-based sources that convert like retinol. So those would follow the direct conversion from RE to RAE. For beta carotene based vitamin A, micrograms of beta carotene divided by 12 equals micrograms of RAE. And if you have vitamin A presented in IU form for retinal form like all animal or from vitamin A palmitate, IU divided by 3.33 equals micrograms of RAE. For foods or ingredients that have mixed sources of vitamin A, you may need to contact suppliers for RAE values or for more detail on the specific forms of vitamin A. And be sure to populate the correct field or fields in Genesis so that your labels report correctly. Here you see a screenshot from the nutrient entry screen in Genesis with vitamin A related fields. RE is used for the 2003 label and RAE is used for the 2016 label. A good practice for populating these, if you know both RE and RAE, fill both of those in so that if an ingredient is used for either format of the label during this transitional period, you'll have the data populated for both fields. To convert folate, micrograms of food folate translates directly to micrograms of DFE. And to convert folic acid to DFE, you multiply micrograms of folic acid by 1.7. In Genesis, we have several folate-related fields. The field that states folate micrograms represents total folate for the 2003 label, and folate DFE is used for the 2016 label. These are the fields you must populate to have values display on those respective labels. Food folate equals naturally occurring folate from food sources, folic acid, is synthetic forms of folate. And these fields tend to be used for record keeping as supporting information, as well as by the Genesis nutrient calculator. With folate, we often see products that are enriched with folic acid to meet a specific fortification level, but you may need to ask your suppliers for more detail about folate if the source is unclear. 
To help automate conversions for several nutrients, Genesis includes a nutrient calculator feature. And we have more detail on the nutrient calculator in Genesis provided in a previous webinar. Essentially, you input the value of one unit, Genesis calculates for another. And for some, you may need to select a specific formula or indicate the form of the nutrient, like you see here with vitamin A. You can apply these calculations one by one, or you can select the nutrient calculator setting to always prompt you for the nutrients that apply. The nutrient calculator is available on the recipe level, level as well as on the ingredient nutrient entry screen. This is very helpful not only as you transition your labels to the 2016 format, but also going forward as you add new ingredients to your software. At this time, let's jump into Genesis, and Ben, will you show us the 2016 Canadian labels as well as some of the settings and formats that we'll want to use? Absolutely, thank you for that information so far, Alicia, and we'll hear from you again in just a few minutes. Uh, to, so, so to start with, what we're gonna take a look at I'm going to start with the, the overall preferences of Genesis and how those impact the differences between the old and new regulations for Canada and just kind of all of the different regulations in general in the program. So if you go to the Home tab of Genesis, which is what you'll see when you first open it and click on Preferences, uh, we can see under the General tab here, the second one down is Nutrition Facts. Um, and that is going to be what set of regulations you are using um, in your overall application. Um, so if you create a brand new recipe, this is the set of regulations that it will follow. Um, if you view the, and we'll take a look at this part in a moment, if you view the ingredient, um, open an ingredient and view the nutrients window, the percent DVs in that window will be calculated based on what we have selected here. So I had Canada 2003 selected to start with. I can switch that over to 2016 hit OK, and now my overall program is running based on those 2016 values. Um, or obviously, if you're doing the United States, you could switch to those as well. And that's something you can switch back and forth pretty easily. Um, one other thing that, that I'll point out um, that aren't quite as, as important, I think, today, or, or maybe not quite as, as on topic to the changes, uh, but under the label tab here, um, you have the language and allergens sections, and those are really important parts to Canadian labeling in general. Now, I currently have Spanish showing in my application, but not French. And I'll switch that because I obviously want to be able to see the French language for creating a Canadian label. And then, of course, I'll also change the allergens to show Canadian allergens and not Mexican. The last webinar we did was for Mexico. Um, so I'll switch all my settings from Mexico to basically Canada now. And obviously, if you're doing multiple regions, you could show both those languages. You could show all of the allergens if you wanted to. I'm just going to focus on just French and just Canadian allergens today because that's what we're looking at today. So again, you've got that nutrition facts uh, section here. I'll go ahead and open up a existing ingredient now that I have in my database. It's just going to be 2% milk because that's what I use for everything most of the time. Um, and as I mentioned a moment ago, if we go to the nutrients tab here in the program, um, it will tell us what set of standards we are using for our percent DV right at the top here. So it says percent DV based on Canadian label standards. If we were to switch that over in preferences to United States sec selection, it would say that as well. Um, so you can get a good idea of exactly what you're using right there. Um, for the nutrient calculator that Alicia mentioned a moment ago, that can be done right here in the nutrients tab right under this area here. Um, you have either the auto calculations or the calculate nutrients button. Auto calculations, let me show all of our nutrients here. If we check auto calculations, you'll notice some of the nutrients turn blue. Um, the blue ones denote that they're calculatable. So if we fill in a value for one of those nutrients, it will ask us if we would like to calculate for another nutrient. Or we can click on calculate nutrients. And this is an important button for you know, those existing ingredients that maybe you don't have a value for um, for RAE since it's for the new label, but you do have a value set in for RE for the old label. You need to calculate nutrients and select, I wanna calculate my RAE value based on 
you know, whatever that source would be. And then we'll go ahead and move over. That's, that's everything we're gonna look at for the ingredient right now. Uh, we'll get back into ingredients in a few moments when we get to the ingredient statement section and a little bit other things like that. I'll go ahead and now open up a recipe that I have in my database here. It's just a salad recipe. We'll take a look at the nutrition label and we'll, we'll take a look at from a functional standpoint of Genesis, what is required to change over our nutrition label from the 2003 standards or whatever is existing with our recipe to those new standards and, and view some of those settings. Uh, one thing to note, and I, I know we've talked about it a few times in past webinars, but I always like to, to mention it a lot. Um, anytime you have an existing recipe, you know, if we put out those new regulations like we did with version 11.3, if you're running a version older than that and you don't have the new regulations, those labels, those recipes will hold their old settings. So they will stay a 2003 label until you open that recipe and go into the edit label or the label settings and change that over. So just note that it's not gonna automatically switch all of your labels to the new, um, because of course we wanna make sure that you're ready for that, you have the nutrients set, all that sort of stuff. So when you are ready, you can click on edit label. And this is where we will be able to select what, what set of regulations you would like to follow. And you can change our country here. We're going to stay in Canada because that's what we're focusing on today. And then under category, you can choose either 2003 or 2016. We'll go ahead and select 2016. And then I'll go ahead and select, I'm going to add bilingual because obviously that's an important part of the labeling overall for Canada. Um, and then for the rest of these pieces, you know, most of this is going to stay the same as it was for the old um, regulations. There's some differences here for, for new versus old, um, you know, for like the voluntary nutrients, as Alicia mentioned, there's a couple that are now volunteer, voluntary that were core. I'm using the wrong words for Canada. I'm using the, Amer the U.S. words for what they're called. But, um, you know, for the functional standpoint of Genesis, they're called voluntary nutrients for Canada. I know they're called... I think additional nutrients, uh, but same idea for, for Genesis here, but you have something like vitamin A, you have it within this list now, whereas before it would automatically put it into that label, as you can see, because we haven't updated that label yet. So we'll hit OK, and we'll change it over to all those settings that we just selected. And that's what your new nutrition label is gonna look like. Um, one other thing to point out is under the nutrient options, we can pull open one that has the option. We'll do vitamin A. Let's see if we can find vitamin A in here. We do have the option to show micrograms as uh, the UG label now. So you notice that that's showing up as that. Um, so that's something that's been added in, in recent updates as well for the Genesis application. So that's something that, that we did for, I believe the new regulations were more specific on the way it needed to be stated for micrograms. That's something we released in a, in a recent patch. Um, and one other thing to, that, that we'll point out here, and I, it's again one of those things that I know we've talked about a few times in the past, but um, for quickness and for simplicity of your work. Um, when you have your settings set that you would like uh, for your nutrition label, I know that changing these, these regulations or these settings for every single recipe that you're doing could be a lot of work, um, but we do have the ability to save and load settings files here. So if you save a file, um, it'll save it as a file on your computer. It's gonna save all of the settings for all of the tabs that we see here you can then go in and load them. So if you wanted to have a label settings for your 2016, so that instead of going in clicking every single one of these individually, you can just save that once and then come back and load it and, or create a few. You know, if you have, you have a set of settings you want for a standard label, a set that you want for a linear, a set that you want for a tabular, you can save a few, save them in a specific place, and then come back and load them as you need. And on that topic, I didn't mention it when we were in the preferences, but I'll go back to that area now if I cancel this window out. If we go back to home and preferences again and go back to that label tab, there is a default settings file. So that's going to 
set your defaults. That'll be just for brand new recipes. So if you do have specific settings you would like for your label that you'd like to set for every brand new recipe you ever create, you can do that with that default settings file. Um, know that if you don't have a file set here, it'll just do the standards that we have based on under your general tab, what you have selected here. So in my case, we create a 2016 Canadian label for every brand new recipe that I create. We'll hand it back over to Alicia now. She'll walk a bit more into, I believe, ingredient statements is what we're going to look at next. Thanks, Ben. Thanks for showing those examples. And again, we do cover some material about preferences and some of the labeling options in previous webinars, and we have tutorials on the ESHA website. So if you need to just pop into a specific topic, we do have resources helpful for those. So switching to the focus of some of the other 2016 changes to the nutrition facts tables, reference amounts for serving sizes have been established to be more consistent and list realistic measures. This makes it easier for consumers to compare similar foods. The regulations provide a table of reference amounts for food that lists reference, household measures, and metric measures to determine serving sizes. For foods that can be measured, these are required to display a common household measure like a cup and then the metric amount is listed in parentheses following that household measure. For foods that come in pieces or slices, the serving size is shown as the number of pieces or slices and is listed with its metric equivalent in grams. For example, the reference amount for sliced bread, like we see here, is 75 grams and bread is commonly consumed as two slices. One bread label might say per two slices 74 grams, where another might say per two slices 62 grams. While the gram weights differ, the consistency in units makes it easy for consumers to compare different products. A pre-packaged product is considered to be a single serving container if the package contains less than 200% of the reference amount for that food or if the amount of the food in the package can reasonably be eaten by one person at a single seed eating occasion. Consider a carton of milk at 473 milliliters. The reference amount for milk is 250 milliliters. 473 milliliters is 189% of the reference amount so as less than 2%, it must be declared as a single serving package like one carton, 473 milliliters. For packages reasonably consumed by one person at a single eating occasion, the CFIA gives an example of a 100 gram cookie. The reference amount for cookies is 30 grams and 100 grams is more than 200% of that reference amount but given a single packaged 100 gram cookie, it is very likely that most of us probably wouldn't only eat part of that cookie, wrap it back up, save it and save the rest for later. There's a pretty good chance that we're going to eat the entire thing at once. So that individually wrapped cookie would include a label with the serving size of one cookie and 100 grams. If you make any claims on your packages, given all of the two, 2016 changes to the daily values, to possible serving size adjustments, and general updates to formulas, your claims might be affected. You can use the nutrient content claims features in Genesis to review the eligible claims for each recipe. As displayed here, when working in the Canadian labeling set settings, Genesis lists the Canadian set of nutrients on which claims can be made and identifies which claims are available for your recipe per serving size or per reference amount. Available claims are indicated by a green check mark. Ineligible claims are indicated with the red slash circle. You can click the drop down menu next to any of the nutrients on the screen to view more detail and regulatory information about the various claims. Per Canadian regulations, Claims on food packaging are based on reference amounts listed in the table of reference amounts for food. The serving size listed on your nutrition facts table is not always the same as the reference amount listed in that table. Genesis allows you to enter a reference amount on which to base your claims. So when you're working with the claims features, Genesis prompts you to either use your recipe serving size or manually enter a reference amount and view your eligible claims. 
the list of ingredients is shown in descending order by weight. For consistency and readability, the 2016 regulations instruct us to use upper and lower case text. Uppercase is used for the first letter of each ingredient, except for terms and parentheses, and uppercase can be used for acronyms and the alpha descriptor and common terms like the B in vitamin B. And ingredient names can be separated either by commas or bullets. Sugar-based ingredients can go by a variety of names and it's not always clear to consumers all of the ingredients present in a food that are really primarily sugar. In order to help consumers recognize the relative proportion of sugars in foods, the 2016 regulations require that sugar-based ingredients are grouped together in the list of ingredients. As part of the 2016 regulation, sugars are defined as mono and disaccharides like typical sugars, cane sugar, white sugar, etc., fructose, glucose, glucose fructose, also known as high fructose corn syrup, sweetening agents like brown sugar, syrups, honey and molasses, and functional substitutes for sweetening agents like fruit juice concentrates and puree concentrates that are added to foods for the purpose of replacing sugars. Within the list of ingredients, sugar-based ingredients are grouped and that grouped collection is placed in the proper descending order of ingredients. Sugar-based ingredients are listed in descending order by weight and placed in parentheses after the word sugars. And sugar-based ingredients are listed in lower case and separated by commas, not bullets. Sugar alcohols and non-nutritive sweeteners are not considered sugar-based ingredients, so they are not grouped. Also not grouped are beverages made from reconstituted, reconstituted juice concentrates that have no sweetening agents. And if the product only contains one sugar-based ingredient and that ingredient includes sugar as part of its name, like cane sugar or brown sugar, then that ingredient is just listed by its name in the proper order in the list of ingredients. Also, it is not required to include sugars present within subcomponent ingredients in this sugar-based grouping approach. For example, the chocolate chips in a chocolate chip cookie, like you see in this example, in the chocolate chip cookie list of ingredients, the white sugar and the brown sugar in the cookie dough are grouped together following the word sugars. The sugars present in the chocolate chips, however, are listed parenthetically as part of the chocolate chip ingredient. They are grouped within the chocolate chip ingredients, but they're not grouped with the cookie dough sugars. The goal of grouping sugars is to declare potentially hidden sugars and to clarify content for consumers. Sugar substitutes and clearly sweetened ingredients that already declare their sugars are not considered hidden sugars, so they're not part of the required grouped ingredients. In Genesis, when working with the ingredient statement features for Canada, you will see an is sugar column. Checking the box in this column indicates ingredients that you wish to group as sugars for the ingredient list purposes. When checked, Genesis groups these properly by weight. The is sugar box is also located in the individual ingredient record screen. So as you add ingredients to your software, you can mark the sugar-based ingredients accordingly. You would mark ingredients like brown sugar, agave syrup, fructose, etc., with the is sugar indicator. As with the chocolate chip example, you would not mark your chocolate chip ingredient as is sugar. For the chocolate chip ingredient, you would include the ingredients of your chocolate chip parenthetically as provided by your supplier. Ben, will you show us these additional settings and features in Genesis, please? Absolutely. And we'll go back over into Genesis. Uh, we'll start off, I'm going to close back up this recipe, or at least minimize it. So we'll open an ingredient again. Let's just do white granulated sugar. Um, so as Alicia mentioned, under the ingredient statement tab, uh, we're, we will have this Canadian options is sugar. This will always appear so long as you have Genesis version 11.3 uh, or newer. Um, so it doesn't matter what your preferences are, what anything like that, that will be there. Um, or even if you have the Canadian module enabled, this is available um, as a checkbox no matter what. 
you notice that you know this is an ESHA ingredient. This isn't one that I entered myself. Most of the ESHA ingredients that are that are set for specifically being sugar are going to be checked off as well. That's something that we're doing for our items too. Um, but that's something that you can check there. So that's the one place within the ingredient specifically uh, that we'll take a look at just for this moment here. And then I'll we'll go ahead and close this ingredient, pull back open my recipe. And within the recipe, uh, as Alicia mentioned, the ingredient statement window will have that is sugar option. One major thing to note here is if I go back over, let me cancel this window back out, go back to my label settings, we change that back to a Canadian 2003 label, that column disappears. Same goes with a US label, Mexico, EU, anything like that. The only time you'll ever see that is sugars column is if we have the Canada Nutrition Facts 2016 selected, which obviously is what we want because that's the only time the is sugar goes into effect. It doesn't count with, or it's not a statement that can be made during, if you're using the 2003 regulations, only with 2016. So that'll show up, so long as you have the label settings selected properly within the recipe. Uh, and then for any of the items, you notice that I've got a few of mine selected that that aren't actually sugars. I didn't mention it before we got started today, but no, it's an example. <laughs> Parsley and celery and tomatoes obviously are not added sugars or are not um, you know, sugar-based products. Um, so I've done that just as an example. I think I was messing around the other day with this specific recipe. But uh, when we check the box, you notice that inside of our statement here, uh, it's up updating automatically. So sugars, tomato, check the other one. It adds it up to, let's see if I can find it, sugars, the other two. So you're seeing that change go on the fly as you go automatically and then we hit OK. And then the, click on view label to actually view that label display. Um, and that ingredient statement will again, automatically update just as we're going. So quick changes will be done automatically within that ingredient statement. Uh, the next area Alicia mentioned was the nutrient content claims. Um, so within that, and she mentioned, I'm gonna switch us back to a 2003 label just for a quick reference here. So a new function that some of you may not have seen a lot, uh, when we click on claims is gonna be this reference amount. And Alicia mentioned it, but it's a good thing to mention again. Um, so the reference amount is how much you are basing your claims on. You know, Generally going to be the reference amount specific for the regulations. As Alicia mentioned, a cookie's reference amount is 30 grams. So if you're making a cookie, even if your serving size is whatever it would be, 50, 70, 100, it's a big cookie as that seems like, um, we can set that for exactly what our amount needs to be, 30 grams at that point. It doesn't have to be equal to the serving size, or if my serving size is 100 grams. And then we can go into our claims and actually select those claims. Um, if we go back and change our label, I did that specifically under 2003 to note that if I change that to 2016, hit OK, go back into claims, it's gonna ask us to reset that because the reference amount for many products were changed between the 2003 and 2016 regulations. So again, it's gonna ask us to set that again because it wants to make sure that it hasn't changed in that time. So you have to make sure that that is a correct thing. So again, I'll set it and maybe instead of 30 grams, it was 50 now, so it was changed. Again, an example, I have no idea what the actual reference amount is for a salad. But then we can go back into our claims and select those. And as Alicia mentioned, um, you know, your, the amounts inside of, your, um, inside of your recipe haven't changed at all, but the actual claims that you could make may have changed based on the percent DV. If you wanna make a claim for vitamin C, a good source of vitamin C is based on 15% um, DV or RDI of vitamin C per serving or per reference amount. Vitamin C has changed though, I believe, um, in, the, in the daily value amount. So while your amount in your serving may not have changed, um, the reference amount may have. So just note that that could be the difference of why you're eligible to make a claim for the old regulations, but maybe not the new, or vice versa, you weren't before, you are now. And then the last thing that I wanted to point out, and it's a 
it's a fairly common function in the program, and and I would assume most of you know this. But just to point out, you know, she mentioned the the changes of serving sizes within um, the new regulations, where you have to do a single serving for the full package. When you change your serving size, you simply go to Edit Recipe. And under the recipe tab, we can change our serving size right here quickly on the fly. So if you need to, do need to change your serving size for your recipe going into those new regulations, you can do that right there as well. And I'll hand it back over to Alicia, and I think we're going to look onto a little bit of documentation. Thanks, Ben. And a quick note on that serving size, just a reminder, thanks, Ben, for pointing that out. It's a very basic step in your recipe making, but when you have to revisit a, a recipe, sometimes you're just not quite in that mode and might forget where to find that. So change your recipe side, size accordingly. And remember that the text, the serving size text that you place on your label is just text. So you may need to update the text serving size information on your label to correspond with any changes that you make to your recipe serving size. Yeah, you want to show that? Yeah, I can jump back over into Genesis really quick. I should have shown that before, but uh, within your, your application, that's going to be in different spots. So edit recipe is going to be where you select the serving size, how the nutrients are, are scaled. Um, but if you go back into edit label, uh, now under the serving size and servings per container, that may be uh, changed if your reference amount, if your you know, if your package is a smaller size or whatever it might be. So that's where you would find that to change. Maybe my serving size went from one cup to one package, something like that. So we can change that accordingly as needed. Excellent, thank you. So in using Genesis, you want to capture the information necessary to support the values you report on your labels. And to do so, you can attach document files to your recipes and ingredients directly in Genesis. Some of the forms of documentation you might want to include would be supplier, supplier spec sheets and data sheets, nutrient database analyses, your base formulas and recipes, any notes that you have on how you develop that formula, batch records, lab results, notes, and even the audit trail in Genesis that indicates changes made by whom and when. And you want to perform your due diligence and maintain the proper records to support your information. And again, as you transition your labels from 2003 to 2016, to ensure greatest accuracy, you want to fill in the missing values for ingredients and consider the units and data fields that need to be reported. Here you can see that if you do not have potassium information for any of your ingredients, you might see a dash on your label. This is obviously not compliant. Or if you have several ingredients in your recipe that contribute to the vitamin A content, but you have not populated vitamin A in the RAE field for all of your ingredients, then your vitamin A value on the 2016 label may be underreported. And here is an example. It's quite drastic, but you can see that if the old value states vitamin or old label states vitamin A at 100%, but the new label states 2%, that would be a clear indicator that some of your ingredients are missing values in the RAE field. Review the spreadsheet for every recipe. You'll hear us say this repeated in webinars. The spreadsheet recipe in Genesis lists the nutrient detail of each ingredient in your recipe, and it's a truly helpful tool to verify your data. You want to see if there are any missing values indicated by dashes. If you see dashes, you want to go back to the individual ingredients and fill in the blanks for those nutrients. On the spreadsheet, you can also look for values in red. So in this example, my potassium value is in red because I manually entered an override value for the potassium. Overrides and moisture adjustments and other adjustments appear in red. And for the nutrients to view, the set of nutrients you're seeing here. In Genesis, you can select the set of nutrients you want to see on screen and on reports. And that's what the nutrients to view features. You can select from presets that we've included in Genesis, and that does include the Canadian core and the full set of Canadian label nutrients, or you can create your own customized set. 
when reviewing your recipes and transitioning your labels to the 2016 format, consider did your formulas or ingredients change? Did the reference serving size for your product change? Does your product qualify to be labeled as one serving based on the 200% of the reference amount rule? Are the claims you make on your packaging still supported by your 2016 labels? And use the spreadsheet report to find and populate missing nutrient values. Use the AutoCalc feature when entering ingredients to help convert nutrients. Contact your suppliers for updated information that support the 2016 labels and update your lists of ingredients and your allergen statements. And here we have a list of resources. Um, the Canadian government websites provide references and resources. The CFI um, site includes industry information on labeling and helpful tools. There's a section that is steps for choosing the correct nutrition facts table for your product and the industry labeling tool, the ILT, that offers quick references, explanations, and examples of the new regulations and cites specific sections of the acts that make up the labeling regulations. So you'll find many features in Genesis, our ESHA webinars like this, and resources available to help you transition to the 2016 nutrition facts labels. Ben, will you show us some of these additional settings and options to help us fine tune and support the 2016 labels? Absolutely. Let's take a look at some of those ways you can do your documentation. So within Genesis, let me close back out some of this. Um, the first thing we'll take a look at is file attachments. That's something that's relatively new. I believe it was version 11.2 or 3 trying to pull it off the top of my head. It was last year released though, so if you don't see it inside of your application, uh, you would either see it by clicking on Edit Recipe and going to the Attachments tab, or you know, this is gonna be a, a, a something that's available in every type of item in Genesis. So whether it's an ingredient, a recipe, a composite ingredient, an advanced label, a, a menu label, any of those will have the ability to attach files. The files attach directly to the specific item in Genesis. So if I were to attach a file here, it would attach specifically to my webinar barley chopped salad recipe. And so this could be anything from you know, an image of the, the recipe itself, a spec sheet, anything in between, um, you know, maybe one of the reports that Genesis creates or the nutrition label that Genesis creates that you save and then attach back in. Um, so a lot of options there for how you go about that. You know, ingredients are probably the easiest way to explain you know, the, the best way of just, if you get a spec sheet from your supplier for the ingredient, you attach it right in so you've got that historical documentation. Um, and again, with an ingredient, I'll open up an ingredient really quick so you can see where that is as well. That one's a bit easier to find because those tabs are always seen when you have an ingredient open, no matter what. So the attachments tab is just the last one here. And you can see I've got a couple of items attached in here, pricing sheets for Genesis um, that I put in. You can put in a description as well. Um, so if this was, you know, the spec sheet from 7, 11, 2018, uh, we can write a little bit about that item too. That way, if the, the file name doesn't make any sort of sense at all, we can at least put some sort of description in so that it, so that we know exactly where it's from, what it's, what's going on with it. And once you've got the files attached in, you can right click to either download the file, open it or delete it. So you have some control to open those files or get rid of them or, uh, or just download them and save them onto your computer. Uh, the next spot we'll take a look at is our notes fields. So if I slide my ingredient over a little bit here, you've got an ingredient open on one side, recipe open on the other side, and at the very bottom of those and at the very bottom of everything you ever create in Genesis, whether again, ingredient, recipe, menu, anything like that, you're gonna have your notes fields at the bottom that you can write into. So if you're looking for any sort of documentation, any sort of information that you want to save about those specific items, you can write that down in your notes. It's a great place to, to have that available too. Um, another place that I just kind of thought of that I wasn't gonna point out, but you can. Um, if you have any notes that you would wanna take or any sort of documentation you wanna do about a specific ingredient inside of a specific recipe. Now, if you right click on your, your ingredient in your recipe and hit modify, we have a comment section within the ingredient as well that just makes a single note with just that one ingredient, again, just in this one recipe. So it's more of a specific note about the ingredient within the recipe. So again, another place you can 
do some documentation, and you can either view those comments you know, just by opening this window again, right clicking on the ingredient, hitting modify, or you can show those comments as a column inside of this view if you would like. You can do that by right clicking in this window and hitting display columns, and then you can add the comments area if you would like as well. So if you'd like to do that, you certainly can. And then one more part of documentation that I'll point out, um, this is gonna be our audit trails. Um, and audit trails are something that are not enabled by default. So know that if you don't see audit trails within or audits uh, within Genesis, it is something you can enable. It's not an additional cost or anything like that. Um, it's just not enabled by default because uh, not, not everyone wants to use them. If you have the cloud version of Genesis, that is something that the technical support team does have to enable for you. So reach out to them. They can enable that for you in the cloud. Um, if you have an on-premises or installed version of Genesis, it's something you can do yourself if you would like. Um, there's a couple steps to it. If you go to our knowledge base, you can search for you know, audit trails and it'll give you the steps. Or again, reach out to technical support. They're always happy to, to give you a hand with enabling those. But basically audit trails, what audit trails are gonna do is they're gonna allow you to create a note every time you save an item. So if I go back to my recipe, I'm gonna close my ingredient for now, I'm done with that. If I go into my recipe and I hit save, if audit trails are enabled, you'll know because it'll say new audit entry, and this is anytime you ever save anything. So every recipe, every ingredient, every menu, everything else um, that you ever save, it will stamp it with the time and date and the user that saved it, and it will allow you to write in some comments, and that allows you to do some great documentation of you know, historical accuracy, what happened, what did I do, I changed the serving size, I changed the label to from old regulations to new, whatever it might be, you can write some notes in there for that. I'm gonna cancel that so I don't save my recipe because I wanna keep it as it was in the past. And then the last thing that Alicia mentioned is the nutrients to view. And of course, that's very important for, especially with, with what we're doing today of, you know, looking at going from the old regulations to the new ones. Um, you definitely want to take a look at the correct nutrients and you have a lot of control over what's seen. So first, let me open my spreadsheet report. And currently I have, let's see what I've got open. I've got the mandatory nutrients for a US 2016 label. If I wanted to change that, I can simply go up to Canada, label 2016 mandatory, and it changes those nutrients specifically to that. Um, and I, I think a lot of the times for, again, for this specific case where you're maybe switching your nutrients or you're switching your labels from old to new, what you generally a lot of times wanna do is go into modify so you can create your own custom set of nutrients. You know, if you do the mandatory nutrients for a, a new label, then you don't get to see you know, maybe you want to see vitamin A, RE, and RAE to see which ingredients have a value for one, not the other, something along those lines. Um, so you can just go in, click edit, and then any of the nutrients on the left side are not currently being displayed in your reports, any on the right side are. So you can select the ones that we would like to make sure that they are correct. So let's do vitamin A, RAE, and RE. Okay, we'll save this as maybe CA 2016 vitamin A and uh, RE and RAE, save it. And what's great is that now allows us to have a new set of nutrients. I now have Canada 2016 with both of those, however I want to name it. Um, and now we can go back to the mandatory ones if we would like to. We didn't adjust that at all. We didn't mess with it. So that one still exists. And we've got our new one that includes those new nutrients. Thanks, Ben. And yeah, as you could see, just another note on those nutrients to view, Ben created a new set. And then just within that recipe, you can click back and forth between any of the sets available. So it doesn't, it's not a setting necessarily, um, but you can at any time, any recipe, choose to see a different set of nutrients as you're working through. So if you need more instruction, 
or a group of you at your organization need more instruction on Genesis from very beginning steps to um, advanced uses, labeling, all of this type of discussion, we have training coming up. And we have, um, is it next week it looks like? Professional level training, which is kind of the basics, fundamentals of Genesis software um, coming up next week at our Oakbrook location. We also have a professional level training in August in Orlando, um, the, an advanced Genesis training. So advanced level gets more into in-depth discussion about labels, um, more advanced type topics and label formatting. That'll be mid-August at the Oakbrook location and a professional level training as well as menu label training. It's a combination class that focuses on the restaurant menu label instruction and labeling in September at Oakbrook. And if you need to reach us, you can certainly find these contacts here. Um, email us, call us, reach out to sales support, our consulting services if you have special projects. And also remember to check out our LinkedIn community to connect with other ESHA users, as well as stay tuned with ESHA News and Industry News with our blog and the ESHA newsletter. And with that, we'll jump into some questions and answers. One other thing to mention, if you're going to be at IFT uh, this coming week, uh, I'll be there. Come join me and, and talk and we can answer any questions that you've got um, or go over anything that you'd like. Right on. Thanks, Ben. He's a friendly guy. Come see him. Do you happen to know our booth number offhand? I don't know it off the top of my head, but we could maybe include it with our follow-up maybe. So, uh, But I don't know it off the top of my head. Okay. We'll check on that and send it out to you. So question number one, in the nutrient screen where you see percent DV standards, which country standards are being displayed? And I'll kind of show you exactly where that is and we'll take a look at that. So um, within either a ingredient or a recipe, if you look at the nutrients tab, again with a recipe, you're gonna to go to edit recipe and nutrients the ingredient, you just go to the nutrients tab itself. It has this percent DV based on whatever standards it states. So Canadian label standards here. So any of the percent DVs we see in this window, or again, I'll open an ingredient. In the nutrients tab here, the any of the DVs that we see here are based on that standard that we have stated here, which is very specifically under preferences, one of the first things that I mentioned today, uh, that nutrition facts setting that we have here. So this is going to control what that is. So if I change this from 2016 to you know, US 2016, I'll change those standards over to US 2016, and the percent DVs will update. And the nutrients that actually even show, you know, white or grayed out, will change too. You know, the US values are are going to be different. The nutrients that are mandatory or have a DV at all. Are going to be different sugar if i can find it somewhere in here for the us i don't believe has a percent dv so a percent dv would be grayed out for canada it would have a value there perfect thank you so question second question if my products are manufactured in the us do i have to use a canadian label so i'll take this one ben if you export your products to be sold in Canada, you must include the proper label. And a US formatted nutrition facts label does not meet the regulatory requirements for Canada. So you need to have a Canadian label on your Canadian sold product products. Next question is, can I view a 2003 label and a 2016 label for the same recipe? Ben, do you wanna demonstrate that? Sure, and the easiest way to go about that would be in the advanced labels area. So if you go back into Genesis, um, you know, with our current recipe that we have here, we go to view label, we can take a look at our nutrition label and we could either do it where it simply, you know, shows us the label and then we could, um, we could switch it to the other label or if we go do a new advanced label for say, uh, I'll say sample the webinar just for quickness sakes 
and then add in our webinar barley chop salad. We can then view the nutrition label for the advanced label, which is going to be based on this exact same recipe. So we can then see side by side. Um, in this case, it would be a US label because I had changed my preferences back in just a couple minutes ago back to US 2016. So now we've got and it's the exact same recipe with the separate labels side by side. All right, thank you. So we have reached the time limit for what we allotted for today, and um, we had some other great questions come in, and we'll handle those in a follow-up. We will be sending out, as Ben mentioned, follow-up email for today's webinar with the recording and the slides, so you'll have more information. Sorry we couldn't get to everything today, but like I said, we'll send that out with the follow-up email, and we really appreciate you joining us today. Have a great day. Thank you.